Welcome everybody to the April's episode of the My Data Guest series. For this episode, uh, we replace once again the classic one-to-one -one interview in favor of a panel discussion with a group of globally spread and exceptionally engaged NIME community members. The NIME challenges ninjas. For the 66 days of data with NIME, uh, to the Just Nine It Challenge, today's guests are always on top of the game. They propose efficient solutions, they ignite discussions on possible alternatives, they are our best ninjas. Um, I would like to welcome Anil Kumar Sharma, who's a DGM Purchase Manager at Dabur India Limited from New Delhi, India. Rafael Lobarri, who's a Business Process Specialist at Arquese from Milan, Italy. JP Nime ST, who's an information system manager for medicinal chemistry from Nara, Japan. Emiliano Amendola, who's a financial data analyst at the United Nations from Asuncion, Paraguay. Martin Munk, who's the global head of plan to produce at Novozymes from Copenhagen, Denmark. The 66 days of data with Nime challenge was designed by Roberto Cadilli. Whereas the Just Nime challenges are designed and run weekly by Aline Bessa and Victor Palacios. So, for this reason, I will leave the place of the interviewer for this My Data Guest episode to Roberto and Aline. Thank you, Rosaria, and welcome everybody to this episode. Uh, thank you to our guests for, be, for being here today with us. And uh, we would like to take this opportunity. Uh, to know more about you, your interest in data analytics, and uh, basically your extraordinary commitment to competing, to completing the nine challenges that have earned you the name, the playful title, let's say, of nine challenges ninjas. So, without further ado, uh, I would like to, you know, know a little bit more about you. Rosario already introduced uh, who you are, your name, and where you work, but I'm sure there is much more to say about your expertise about your um, your knowledge. And therefore, I would like to ask you to spend a few words for our audience uh, to tell, uh, tell us more about yourself, your career, um, and what are you currently uh, working on. Um, so let's maybe start with um, uh, Emiliano. Would you like to start? Yeah, sure. Hello, everyone. Um, first, I would like to thank uh, Roberto, and, and Aline for for having me and the rest of us in this panel. Uh, well, I am, uh, again, I am Emiliano and I'm a computer science engineer with a strong focus on data engineering, data analytics, etc. And I consider myself as a very generalist uh, data scientist, generalist uh, data analyst, because as, uh, at this time, uh, I do a little bit of everything, you know, uh, from the, starting from the data architecture, going through the cleaning and transformation processes, applying machine learning or data mining models up to the final user presentation with uh, chart and dashboard. So um, in my entire career, I've been working mostly on banking and financial institutions data, on retailing data for the most part, using tools like um, Python, Nine, R, program language, and Tableau for the most part. Now I am currently working uh, on a remote role as a data analyst for the United Nations Secretariat, in which I'm producing all the needed data sources for the expenses and revenue reports of the United Nations, uh, using NIME, obviously, uh, which is actually public information. You can Google it, you can search for UN financial statistics, and then you will find our reports and a couple of charts and the raw data sources if you want to uh, download it and analyze it by, by yourself. Okay, great. That's Hi. super interesting. So you basically cover a, a broad range of areas and applications. That's yeah. uh, extremely interesting. Maybe some um, some good source for some you know upcoming challenges. <laughs> yeah. Although you already be you already have an advantage in that case. <laughs> um, um, Anil, would you like to go yeah. next? Yes, yes. Uh, like I'm Anil from uh, like uh, Delhi NCR, and it's a, it's in India. So. I'm a procurement professional, so you know you uh, like from. I would give you some some business perspective in in, in this one. So, I, I'm a procurement and supply chain professional for 
uh, since last 17 years or so. And I'm working with uh, a traditional medicine company like name uh, Dabar India Limited. And uh, I'm currently uh, handling uh, commodity sourcing. It's mainly of, of raw materials uh, like like sugar, uh, spices, dairy, all, all these uh, soft commodities I'm handling it. So uh, like as, as the data uh, like has become the integral part of, of uh, the business, so I that intended me to uh, to look for for different alternatives to look and then that's where I I started watching and and I I, I just hitched to a nine. <laughs> okay, great. Thank you very much, um, Martin. Would you would you share your your path, your career, um, something more about yourself? Yes. And uh, hello, everybody. Thank you, Roberto. Uh, my name is uh, Martin. Uh, I graduated from a master's degree in engineering management uh, some 10 years ago, which means in summary that I've been working with data and, and different variations of data for the last uh, 15 years or so uh, in various positions, different companies, uh, but kind of the uh, overall theme around it has been data. Um, I'm very passionate about uh, uh, data and it is a passion of mine and I'm quite a data driven person. And I'm intrigued by the possibilities and, and the insights that you can develop by connecting different data sources and bringing new perspectives to light uh, and, and bring some, some, some new perspectives uh, on, on a specific topic that you're working on. More recently, uh, we have been so fortunate in my company uh, that we have invested in, in a NIME server license. So uh, we, as a business uh, and IT department, are fighting uh, arms and legs on integrating that into our existing data landscape and make it more broadly available for the casual data analyst and, and at some point grow into a citizen data scientist, hopefully at some point. And that, of course, will be NIME uh, an integral part of, of the being on that journey that we're on. Oh, that's super interesting. Thank you very much. And also, well, congratulations on your on your upgrade. <laughs> we are happy. Um, OK, uh, Naimis, would you like to introduce yourself? Uh, yes, uh, thank you. Uh, um, I, do, I introduce myself very shortly. Uh, my current sure. job is a database management for drug discovery research. And, uh, and also, I'm the evangelist of name in our company. It's my <laughs> introduction. <laughs> That's super nice. So you are competing yes. with Rosaria. <laughs> <laughs> no, 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 no. She is a superstar. <laughs> <laughs> That's great. Thank you very much. And last but not least, Raffaello. Hello, my name is Raffaello. I'm 26. And two years ago, after graduation in management engineering, specialized in supply chain management. I, I started working for Archese, that is a company in the transportation and logistics sector. And I started using, I started using NIME, uh, I think it was in August last summer. So I am very new, um, but um, I became passionate and I, I decided that I, I wanted to learn um, to use it not only for work but also for outside work as a just as a as a hobby let's say so i'm following all the challenges <laughs> <laughs> that's great because that seems like to be so the, the time when you start it seems to be also a time where we launched the first challenge but we'll talk about it later and uh, mm -hmm. so thank you very much for 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 this uh for this for telling me about this Okay, that's uh, so that's very interesting. So your background and you can do uh, it's super interesting. And uh, um, I was wondering, given the variety of areas that you're currently working, um, I'm curious just to know how your interest uh, in data analytics how it started in the first place. Was it because of your university studies, or was it something that you developed later on on during? On, the, on basically on the job. So maybe you started with some job that has to do with some data analytics, and then you transition as you went farther in your career to more uh, data centric, let's say, or data driven uh, jobs. Um, maybe we can start now from Raffaello. He, he was the last one to answer before. Yeah, I, I think it. Uh, I discovered this passion um, when I was working on my thesis because I had to develop a 
to develop a, a logistic network for a, for Banco Alimentare, that is an Italian food bank. And I decided to take the challenge uh, doing some programming in R because I didn't know about NIME and I know that Excel was not enough. <laughs> so taking this challenge really, um, I, I really enjoyed it. Yeah, I really enjoyed it. And I, I discovered uh, an entire world that, because you know, in management engineering coding is not a core competence. So I, uh, it op- an, an entire world, let's say, opened in front of me. <laughs> it unfolded basically when yeah. you start. With, uh, okay, <laughs> yes. great. That's, that's, that's cool. Um, Anil, would you like to tell us about your, how you started uh, your passion or, um, for data analytics? Yeah, motivation is critically linked to, you know, ongoing jo- job profile, you know, uh, like we, as being in commodity purchaser, like, you know, you need to deal with various amount of data, whether it is a structured one right from SAP or, or you know, unstructured one right from the different market or, or even the, you know, day to day, like, you know, the markets which, which are highly volatile in nature. So, you know, I had different amount of, of data, various uh, structure of data and, you know, Excel was the major hitch where, you know, you know, it was a real bottleneck you know, for, for every one of us. So, you know, just to deal with that and, you know, uh, I was searching for, for, for some kind of solutions where, which, wherein, you know, I can get some, some amount of, of relief of uh, everyday ref- refreshing of the data, inputting it and then, then you know, wrangling those data. So looking for such solutions and, you know, uh, uh, I saw the, this, this on the Gartner that, you know, this has become a visionary uh, and then you know uh, i just inclined to just just uh, search it for, for for it and that's where like and i just, just jumped down to uh to nine and then then i really liked it later on thank you and but was your studies originally also related to no no, no. i'm not i'm not or... basically from uh from a data background i just, just it is just just an interest with which which just just stuck me down. okay Okay. I'm not like you know entirely uh, like you know from the data background at all. Like, not okay. Like, okay. So now this is a nice example of growing into the, yes. the job, basically into the role. So, as you, you know, as you uh, in real sense, you can say that you know, uh, no, uh, uh, like no quotas applies to us because I don't know uh, R or or you know I didn't know anything about the R or or the Python. We just, these were just fancy jar- jargons for us. So, okay. Uh, like, at least that that made my my life easier for that. Like you know, I I could use others model for 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 any of those analysis and you know move on. Okay, I, I just didn't, didn't have to depend on on some kind of analysis to even illustrate the problem. All right. Okay. Great. That's 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 amazing. Um, okay. Then let's go maybe for uh, Emiliano. Sure. Well, um, it's actually connected to my university studies. Uh, back in my in my in my senior years, I let's say I I saw the light at the end of the tunnel because uh, I didn't want to spend my life as a software engineer. I do like coding, of course. Uh, as as data scientists, uh, we need we need to to master that tool of coding, but not in a way as a software engineer would. So um, there was actually uh, one subject which is called uh, data mining and. Mm-hmm. That were uh, that is what I was introduced with uh, to Nine Analytics platform, and I've been using that uh, ever since. Yeah. Okay. Amazing. Thank you. Um, okay. Nine must. Um, I think the microphone is still muted. Oh okay. yeah. Yeah. <laughs> so, <laughs> uh, I uh, I have been a medicinal chemist for uh, over 20 years. And <laughs> I have realized the importance of data-driven research. So that is why I became an administrator of database that is one of the most important informatics infrastructure. I see. And so it then, was mm-hmm. really uh, yeah, the please. need to substantiate your research and to consolidate your findings that motivated exactly, your interest. Yes, okay. uh, mm. That's nice, thanks. Okay, and last, Martin. Yes. Yes, so I guess it, it comes from many different areas and where does it spur from or where did it actually start? Um, I think 
one of the more concrete on the business side of things is is basically that I come of of course as many others or most people from a world of Excel and I I love that uh, world, but at some point you just realize that you it's not enough. Uh, there is a limit too much how much that technology can handle of data and variety and complexity that you basically grow out of it. And one of the things that where we really uh, we, where I really um, uh, understood that is that we adopted uh, adopted a, a visual analytics tool, uh, Tableau, and that you just realize it can eat a lot more data than your casual PowerPoint presentations can do, and your requirement to have a, a broader variety of metrics and, and granularity and more refreshed, up to date uh, data. Where Excel is just it's not really uh, the right tool to do that. Of course, you can pressure it to do more things, but it's really not an ideal tool. And this is kind of where this uh, low code, no code uh, space emerges that you actually have technologies there without having to call IT to ask them up to set up a new database where you as a, a business user has the possibility uh, to take uh, charge and control of, of your old data flow and then start eating into that what you can call traditional IT uh, competencies and actually bring that out to the business user. So that's basically where I, I really saw um, a gray space of, of potential uh, and NIME emerges there as a, as a very cool, easy to get started, uh, free to use uh, technology. So you can really get a taste of it without having to uh, ask for a bit budget for, for a manager. Okay, so also in, in your case was something that was uh, developed or you grew in, you grew into the into this um, data driven world in mm. the, during the job, right? Or in the job? Yes. Yeah. Okay. That's that's also a great uh, great to I mean great testimony. Um, I think I'll leave to next question to Alina. Yes. Hello, everybody. <laughs> Okay, so a few of you have already touched upon this topic a little bit, but it's still I'm going to insist a bit more. Uh, so very likely, you know, those of you who grew this interest um, during university studies were exposed to classes in traditional coding. And, and although some of you have already answered a bit, I'll still ask, how did your first encounter with visual programming or with the no code, low code approach, specifically with NIME happen? And how, how about the others who grew an interest in data analytics after formal university studies? I basically want to know how tied to the university it was. And maybe we can start with uh, Emiliano. Okay, yeah. Um, I remember that our, uh, in that particular subject that I was talked about, uh, I remember that our final project was to implement a cross-sell upsell campaign using techniques such as a priori algorithm and frequent item sets. And then, and after that, we needed to present our, our model, our project to our lecturer and convince him that our model was right and our campaign was going to be successful. So, um, and all, uh, we have developed that in, in NIME, using, using NIME actually. And I was comparing, uh, back in the time, I was comparing the time to deliver these uh, results with visual programming instead of uh, hardcore programming. Uh, I don't know, the, the difference is huge actually. And for me, that was the, 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 the engaging point to, to start using NIME uh, ever since. I see, that's interesting. How about you, Nymest? Mm -hmm. um, I was uh, over, yeah, I was a non-programmer for over forty years, um, mm -hmm. but uh, seven years ago, mm, seven years ago, um, I learned about Nime from a senior colleague at work. Mm -hmm. So, as a non-programmer, I was attracted um, by the fact that. Uh, it was intuitively understandable, uh, even for me. So it I was a, a time I, I, I wear the uh, attract no night. So democratic in a way, right? You don't have to know how to code to yes, use exactly. it. <laughs> how about you, Raffaello? Um, well, I, I discovered about Naim uh, just like uh, Naim is at work because my boss told me to, to start in, in for myself about uh, NIME and low coding in general. 
after understanding what uh, Nine was and lo the low code approach uh, in general, um, I was shocked that no one at university never mentioned it. So, because I, I came out of university with a trade off. Either you go for simplicity with Excel, which is very easy, but uh, just like Martin said, low amounts of data and transformation possible. Either you go for programming, so big quantities of data, you can do everything, but sometimes very big headaches because when, when, when it comes with bugs, it can be very tough, especially for one like me that is not a programmer. So I was shocked, but um, I, I'm glad I discovered about uh, Nime and, uh, and of course, low coding. I hear you. Thanks. Solved a lot of problems. <laughs> <laughs> I can only imagine. <laughs> How about you, Anil? Yeah, that Swift was gradual, you know, uh, like uh, just just to uh, present uh, our, our uh, studies, uh, like, you know, uh, our, our business cases, like, you know, we, we were using Excel and then uh, uh, this visual analytics were happening. So, you know, I, I just switched on to Tableau and uh, I, like I got a certificate also like in Tableau desktop specialist also. But uh, when I was making a lot of dashboards and all, like I was facing uh, a major problem that was of data wrangling. And it was eating away a lot of time. And uh, uh, the, the data was was uh, like, you know, it was scattered everywhere and it needed, lot, uh, you know, ingestion and uh, it needed a lot of, lot of, uh, you know, a, a, a continuous task wherein you, you need to, to wrangle those, those data. So, you know, I was searching of, of tools. Nowadays, you, you can find out that there are many of tools, even Tableau has one, but uh, these are based on some kind of similar kind of concept. But uh, that time, you know, it was really eating away a lot of my time. And that's where, like, you know, I just uh, saw this one and, you know, it was quite easy and, you know, I could scale it up right from those scale, uh, like, you know, basic Excel task, uh, pivoting or, or uh, you know, inputting data and all like reading uh, files and all to the ml uh, uh, like machine learning or or including uh, this python scripts and also you know uh, like i don't have to jump in from one tool to another uh, so that that made my, my life easier and then you know for for a, a, a usual user this is one of the like in a key key areas like you know, you you need a solution which is quite scalable in nature you don't have to switch from one tool to another to to another like it's it's a longer like a, a, a run player it's a, it's a dark horse you can see i see thanks and how about you martin yes i just needed to unmute here um yeah for me i, I think the the primary benefits for me as i see it um is the ability to have more people easily available and give them new capabilities that for them have been closed off. So if my colleagues, if I want to them to grow into something I've been doing, if I do a black screen coding and Python, add some modules, uh, functional programming, how should I operationalize those? I will end up as being kind of the sole contact person for any of the solutions that I'm doing. So even though I have some background in actually doing coding, I have been somewhat reluctant to do that in a business setting as I would be kind of the sole dependent uh, to maintain and operationalize that over time. So I actually think I've been also waiting, holding off using common tools such as Excel VBA coding that is easier for more people to understand that the, the, the broad masses of business users still have that technology. Where I really see uh, Nime it, with this low code visual coding uh, drag and drop functionality, it's much easier for me to hand it over and explain how things are working. And now with the server component, uh, the collaboration uh, with business users and other colleagues across the company will just I think it will just explode in the use cases that we've been we've been doing across our company in over times. That's super interesting. So it's not only about democratizing the understanding, but also making sure that you're not the only person responsible for keeping something, right? Or maintaining something. More people Definitely. understand, more people can help. <laughs> That's great, folks. Thanks. So now I have another question. So regardless of your education background or area of expertise, 
Um, we often hear users say that one of the best aspects of adopting Nime Analytics platform is the very fast learning curve and the access to lots of free educational resources. What is your experience in that sense? Perhaps we can start with Rafael. Uh, well, I, I, I took both courses, the basic and advanced ones, and they really they, they were really quick. I mean, in less than one week, I, I could complete them because I was on holiday, so I had a <laughs> lot of spare time. Um, and it, they were very easy for me. I mean, that that is that, that can can help you build, let, let's say, the very uh, a good basis. Okay, to start mostly any kind of work, at least the easiest ones. For me, the apart from the courses, what really made the difference was starting using Nime at work and solving problems that let's say, I had to find my own way to decide how to do stuff. That really made the difference and made me uh, achieve a, st a step above what I was able to do with the courses. Mm -hmm. I see. Thanks. How about you, Nymist? Yes. Um, so, as I told you, uh, I am a, no, no, I am a semi uh, evangelist no <laughs> name in our company so when i gave our uh, sample workflow to our colleagues with no programming e experience and then explain it to them they became able to customize it in a few numbers that would be a good success story for me and for them <laughs> i see Thanks. How about you, Martin? Uh, me personally, I come from a similar low code, no code uh, tool. Uh, so the basic concept, I think I got pretty much nailed at the get go. My biggest hurdle adopting to Nime was uh, the big node repository that there is, and then it is uh, huge. So just knowing the names, getting familiar with the terms, the functionality, uh, how to configure the things, I think was the ones that had the was the biggest hurdle for me. But I think the rest uh, is pretty intuitive. I jumped directly into the L3 courses, I think it was called about productionization um, and collaboration. And I think that is where I really kind of uh, understood it and it, and it clicked. Uh, for the features and how do you actually collaborate in this setting? How do you grow from a desktop into a server environment? How do you really expand the value you get out of the investment? That is not only a, a person to person kind of personal optimization and efficiency of your daily work, but it becomes a company wide uh, benefit that you can, that you can pull from that. I hear you. So it's not only an analytics platform, but actually when you, when you found out about Nime server too, right? So that, that was a leap. That's cool. Mm. <laughs> How about you, Emiliano? Well, my my whole experience, uh, actually, in a general sense, was amazing with this because uh, we have loads and loads of examples on the internet. The Nime TV channel in YouTube actually is very useful. Uh, the official documentation, all of the examples on the in, on the on the examples hub of Nime, uh, the forum actually is another great tool. To, so where you can learn from from others, yeah, um, you name it. We have uh, with Nime since it is open source, we have um, a bunch of um, of starting points to 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 learning. And I don't know, maybe I can name a couple of things about the 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 platform. But one thing that I like the most is the the, the little help button on each node. Maybe uh, and sometimes it goes, um, yeah, it is uh, underrated, but. That it helps you because you don't have to go to the internet and search for things, and that's great because it actually keeps you focused on doing. All the functions are there. You don't have to re-implement things, and I don't know. That gives you that uh, fast delivery of of results. You know. I hear you. I'm also a heavy user of the help button. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Because there are so many nodes, right? I mean, it's really hard. Exactly. To, you know, you, 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 Even you, if you are an experienced user, you 
you, you tend to yeah how, how how can i do that and how can i do this and and exactly. you go and yeah there's always something new to find out about yeah. thanks anil right. how about you yeah it was quite a steep you can say it and you know i agree with emilia know that you know it was nine tv first like you know that that was the first one like you know i just, just hitched on like you know whenever i found out something next to london it was note by note you know uh, there were many notes and you know that it, it was a step by step learning and and you you can move on from one to another and then nine tv helped it out and later on i was eager to to uh, like you know subscribe to those books of you know, rosaria that uh, beginners luck and then then advanced luck so that that made us like and, and it was quite quite understandable and you know uh, easier to understand and and move on on and stick to the tool that's cool yeah nine tv our youtube channel is, yes is yes a, it, was, it was it was it yeah. was yes it's a great it's a great it's a great resource easy, yeah. and now you know it is learned upon that that entire uh, self self service uh, like you know yeah, self paced the paced courses are there and that is quite quite good you know, like yeah. uh, even the exercises also uh, like uh, you know uh, keep, uh, kept in mind mind that, that how to it, it was thought through uh, like uh, that this course is there's a, a this breadth of resources right the youtube videos the learn upon courses yes. all of them so free. Every, you you can fi find out each and every place like in the wherever you you can either it is nine tv or or learn upon or or you can say that you know it, it is a nine forum you you name it like you will find it everywhere yeah cool. okay Great. thanks for the answers um so now i'll hand it back to roberto yeah thank you alina Okay, so thank you very much, all of you, for introducing yourself, for telling us a little bit more about your journey uh, towards data analytics. And now let's move to the, let's say, the core of our interview. Uh, that is the nine challenges, right? So uh, maybe let's give some a little bit of um, context information for our audience. Um, so we are at nine. We try always to create some content that is engaging, especially for learners, right? We want people. To, to learn, but also in a, we try to, to, um, uh, to make it in a, the funniest and the most engaging way possible. And so since last year, the end of last year, we decided to approach or to adopt a new method, which is the one of challenges. And in September last year, 2021, uh, we started uh, with a 66 days of data challenge that was about with a focus on data wrangling and data exploration. And then in February this year, as you, of course, know, uh, we started, we launched the uh, Just Name It Challenge. Uh, there are weekly challenges, right? Um, and they cover different areas, different levels of complexity, and so on. And so uh, then a few, uh, the next following questions are especially directed to Anil and Raffaello, because they not only are Lime Challenge ninjas, but also veterans to a certain extent, because they also participated in the in our first challenge the 60 60 days of challenge with nine and so my first question to uh to both of you would be uh was it the first time ever in general that you were uh doing the 66 six days of data challenge uh, regardless of nine um maybe with a with another tool or with different with a coding language with a script language so maybe uh, anil do you want to go first yeah this was the first time like you know the, the 66 days of challenge and you know being in uh, you know after learning uh, uh, like from 9 tv and then uh, beginners luck and advanced luck i wanted to test my knowledge and you know uh, and 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 uh, the idea of bit by bit, bit learning and then testing yourself was, was quite good and and uh, you know uh, daily spending uh, those those 15 minutes or, or 20 minutes was was also quite good like you know i just wanted to uh, like was quite eager to spend those, those many many times even though there was some some festive times still like i just wanted to spend uh, spare the, the, those 15 20 minutes and that made me like you know like uh, uh, th that's a good idea even even nowadays like the, the like the, the idea of of uh, the, this uh, latest challenge is also quite good just name it is is quite good like you know, it, it just keep keeps on aging and you learn so many things in this this kind of, of learning method Thanks. That's great. Um, and Raffaello, what about yeah, you? Yeah, same for me. Same for me. Never heard about 66 days of data before. So um, that was my first time. And also, I it, 
I, I still was, um, I, I was not so familiar with Nime and it really helped me a lot to get to know, you know, the basic notes and how to use them more fluently. I, it, it, I, I, I discovered so many new notes during the challenge that uh, <laughs> I, I can't really, I mean, I, I can make a list because I, we will go on and on for one hour. <laughs> <laughs> okay, but then that's great because uh, since it was uh, the first time, I mean, you really committed on a daily basis for five to 30 minutes, depending on exactly on the task. So that's sort of that already by itself, it's remarkable. And thank you for, for participating. And then I would like to ask you, uh, what is the, the task that you enjoyed the most and that you maybe uh, felt like it was maybe more boring, or no, no, or you did enjoy the list in general throughout the entire experience, of course. Um, yeah, Anil, you wanna go first? Yeah. yeah. I enjoyed the task and, you know, it is the daily commitment, you know, uh, even though it is, it is a, uh, like, you know, a very smaller one, like, you know, th that keeps it, uh, uh, like, you know, engaging with, with, with such kind of solutions. So, you know, uh, it, it is like, just like, like a daily code, like, you know, you, you do it. So uh, th that's a, like, a fun part of it, like, <laughs> even though it is, it is a daily one or, or the weekly one, that's a fun part of it. Daily appointment, let's say. Commitment, commitment is, is quite, like, you know. Uh, keeps on itching I see. And for you, Rafaelo? Yeah, the same for me. I enjoyed uh, the the entire challenge, but especially the last two uh, tasks: the one to be to to build the work cloud, and the one to make the um, the graph. I, mm -hmm. I don't remember exactly the the, the network the, graph. The one with yeah, exactly the the one okay, with well, the. So you the even aspects. did the bonus, the bonus task. Great. <laughs> yeah, I All did. Right. Amazing, amazing. That's really some commitment. Um, okay, um, and I would like to ask you now, um, so at some point towards the end of the challenge, we ask you to uh, to create some interactive uh, dashboards uh, with some visualization nodes, of course. Um, and my question is, Ed, you have, have you ever, or Ed, you have created um, a dashboard uh, in the first place back then when you, when you were asked to do it? especially um, that we try to introduce in the challenge um, a node, which is the refresh button widget node, which was released just a few months before uh, the, the challenge started. And I just wanted to you know, ask you whether you created a dashboard before, and if you did, maybe you could see how different it was uh, after the introduction of, the, of that node. Let's say maybe, um, yeah, yeah. Rafaelo, do you want to? You want to go first again? Okay. Um, no, I never used or built a component view before, and I, I heard about widgets. I but I'd never used them before the challenge, and now I'm I'm using them very frequently because <laughs> the the composite view is very it's very easy. Which I, it, it's very easy, and it's also I don't know how to say it. it's practical. You get all the information in one place. I see. Yeah. Exactly the point, right? Of you know the, having the composite view, so to, it's easy to communicate your findings to to others. Mm -hmm. um, and Anil, what, what what was your experience yeah, the, building dashboards? Yeah, dashboard, dashboard. I was uh, making it in in Tableau only, but but uh, like in in uh, nine no, I was not uh, like making the dashboards. Uh, but uh, very recently, like I just just uh, made a composite uh, dashboard and. Uh, I heard uh, uh, like you know a lot about refresh button uh, when when Paolo was was making uh, like you know published it and I was curious that what exactly that that uh, refresh button might do. But <laughs> when when I made this uh, the, the, the uh, dashboard, I found that the, this is quite uh, useful and you know it makes sense like you know when when you have a refresh button like just like like you know in, even in the web like you, know, you have once you put all these entries and then, then you you put in like you know. Uh, now, now just go in like like uh, that's where like uh, this uh, refresh button will, will do. I, that's great that we will will you know pass your <laughs> your uh, your answer to Paolo uh, who is going to be very happy about it, <laughs> to inspire to inspire other people's other people um i think there is another now a question again uh, maybe uh, by uh, by Aline, right Yes, basically, uh, I would like to know if there was like a node or a task that made you go like, wow, this is amazing and I can do this in a fully codeless way. 
and perhaps Anil, you can respond. Yeah, I think that the web scrapping thing was was, was quite you know for a for a business user and who who have not dealt anything uh, and and does not know much about like, about data analytics and all. So uh, web scrapping was was uh, the the thing. And I was searching for uh, like on the uh, like you know on the YouTube's and all, and everybody uh, like you know, moved on towards some Python and. Uh, some some uh, beautiful soup and all. So I thought, you know, how, how I'm going, going to learn all these things, and I still wanted to uh, to have those information because you know, uh, like just for even uh, for the work, like I needed data you know, from many sites, and and you need uh, updated data. So needed some kind of tool, and, and then uh, in in Nime it is it, it it is quite easy. Uh, like you know, you just uh, four or five steps, and you you, you can do it. Mm -hmm. I see. Yeah, true. <laughs> true that. Much more practical. How about you, Rafaelo? Uh, what really amazed me was the data exploration node, because sometimes you know you you receive data that that you have never seen before. You're not you you don't know what you are looking at, and in one simple way you can get a very high level uh, information. Uh, about what what you are about to analyze in a very easy way. I see, I see. Yeah, lots of JavaScript there that allow you to visualize a bunch of different properties of the data too. I really like this JavaScript visualization nodes. Um, so I'll hand it back to Roberto. Yeah. So um, I, this is just uh, let's say the last question about uh, the old challenge, uh, which by the way. Uh, for people maybe uh, watching us, it's uh, available and you can obviously start doing it whenever you want. Um, so I didn't include, so I missed to include uh, a task with a 3D scatter plot uh, node. Um, and um, I actually regret not to have included it because I think it's a, it's a cool cool node. I just uh, I just missed it. <laughs> um, and I was uh, wondering uh, if there is something that you wish I had included um, or had dedicated more days uh, during during the roadmap in the roadmap um, because yeah there was this is a precious let's say available uh, advice that I will remember and hopefully uh, for the next challenge this will be let's say this, your feedback will be included. So Anil, do you want to start? Yeah, like that the challenge was quite exhaustive and comprehensive. So you know I think you you covered each and every bit of of notes in, in this one. So. Uh, and, and I try to uh, like you know, use uh, like many of it like in, a, in my, my challenges, but uh, maybe you can you can try out some if and uh, case switches also like switch in uh, uh, like you know, th those would would help it out like just just to expand the base. That sounds good. Thanks, <laughs> Rafaelo. I'm taking notes. <laughs> no, for, <laughs> uh, for me the um, the challenge was, I, I mean you, you covered so so many so many different nodes, so many things that nothing came to my mind, but you know, there's always a new challenge. Probably you'll make a new one. Okay, yeah, sure, absolutely. I mean, just drop us a line whenever there is something you wish could be included and I will I will keep the feedback into account. Okay, so from my side, when I was creating the challenge, one aspect that I really enjoy, enjoyed and I really liked was the, the daily interaction, right? I was uh, talking to people on basic on social media, on Twitter, and you know, we, we talked a lot on, on Twitter, we were posting a solution, so we were interacting, and it was also nice to see the daily commitment, right, that the community was, was putting into the challenge. So it was rewarding to see you grow, and also for me, it's interesting to answer your questions or to monitor what you're doing, because I see, okay, here I could improve this, here I could have done better, here is something that people have enjoyed and, and like doing. Um, um, so, um, so in, in, I mean, in, in general, I think even for those people who just simply watch the challenge, they were just, uh, you know, um, watching the evolution of it, I, I think that was also very beneficial. Um, but the idea, anyway, the idea of, let's say, sharing with the community, um, learning together and building uh, sort of a, uh, something together, it's also central, crucial to the Just Name It uh, challenge right that we launch in February and I think this is something Alina can um, can talk about more mm -hmm. right and can say something more about that yes exactly we also go on social media and we also talk to you and you see you marking the challenges with the hashtags and I feel very happy that 
we with these weekly challenges are, you know, contributing to your NIME learning. So a first question that I have regarding the Just NIME challenges is the following. So now we're several weeks into the Just NIME series, right? Today we launched the challenge 13. So that's, you know, over three months. And I'm sure that all of you can tell us which is your favorite challenge thus far, right? So uh, I would like to hear that. And I would also like to know uh, what is it that you learn if you went better even, whether you learn something new with the challenges. So perhaps we can start with Martin. Yeah, there's always something to learn from all of the challenges that are posted. So uh, so I'm really enjoying taking those also to, uh, to challenge myself and to make sure that uh, there may be a new few notes that you can learn about or new ways of, of applying those notes. I'm, I'm enjoying that. I, I clearly remember the ones I, the challenge I enjoyed the most was the women in you know, women in government. I think it was challenge number seven or so. I found a, a small, uh, a very cool open API called I think it was called rest, restcountries.com, and that has the possibility that you could post a country and then you could get a lot of other things. I think it was an amount of people or something like that you needed to look up. Uh, and then you can also get the na uh, neighboring countries. So you have the possibility to impute values of missing countries by using the neighboring countries. So you can actually, all, 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 all of that you can do that's interacting with the REST API. And if there was no uh, neighboring countries, you can use a continent. And in that way, you have different strategies to fill in it, to fill in out, fill out the, the missing values. So I think that was a, a very cool, uh, cool challenge in a way you kind of use, use all of the cool things that is out there on, on the internet. And also, of course, the most recent uh, the most recent challenge, number twelve, uh, the REST, A REST API for <laughs> human genes, then uh, the internet interconnectivity and interconnectedness, and then kind of the ability to exponentially uh, increase the value of the analysis by interacting with with other pieces of information in this uh, live way, so you have only little overhead that you apply to the analytics you do. Yes, exactly. We were a little cautious about introducing that one in the very beginning because people get scared when they hear the term REST API, but we were like, okay, it's time. <laughs> so how about you, Anil? Let's see, uh, for, for me, uh, as I said that, you know, uh, scrap, uh, like uh, web scrapping was, was quite quite you know, difficult to, know, to, to even understand it. And, you know, the recent challenges are like, uh, I just, just took part and, you know, I could, uh, like I understood about just not about the get request and REST API and all, but uh, just the loop also. Like I, I try to use the lo the loops in this one. So you know, uh, every every time you you know there is a different uh, challenge. You, you it it gives you you a different perspective to to learn about data, and that yeah. that's a fun part of it. I agree. I agree, and I saw many people using loops too. <laughs> uh, how about you, Emiliano? Well, I had to agree with uh, with Martin on this because I think it was the seventh challenge, the one of the women in government, because um, in addition to be a very important KPI or indicator to measure, it, it is actually part of one of the reports that I am producing now with the United Nations. Uh, it is part of what uh, what is called the SDG reporting or sustainable development goals, which are uh, like blueprints to achieve a better and more sustainable world. So um, ensuring women's full and effective participation is one uh, it's one key part of a greater category of KPIs, uh, which is the gender equality, among others such as uh, no poverty, quality of the education, reduce inequalities, and etc. So that is why I found that that challenge very engaging, very interesting to 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 do. I see. So the story, mm -hmm. the motivation matters too, right? That the goal. As exactly. a desk, I see. Cool. Mm -hmm. And how about you, Rafaelo? I really liked it. I, I don't remember if it was the first or the second challenge, the one uh, in which you had to take a CSV and split it and put the files into different folders. Exactly. The second. Okay. I really liked that one because it was very new for me. Um, and it was also very useful for yeah. things that I had to do at work. 
I see. So again, I see that like the, the task or how useful it is on a day-to-day -day basis, you know, it's, it's motivating, right? As expected, right? So mm -hmm. I wouldn't expect anything different. <laughs> how about you, Nymist? Mm -hmm. So my choice is number three, CDC cancer data. Mm. Uh, it seemed uh, easy at a glance, but you said that the real world data, slightly dirty. So I tricked and tricked. It's very uh, good uh, challenge for me. So that one had some controversies. Remember, people were treating the data differently. The farm exploded in that one. Yeah. <laughs> that was fun. <laughs> Yeah, thanks. Uh, another thing that we would love to hear is anecdotes about, for example, if there was a challenge that you could not solve right away and then suddenly you thought of the solution, or if there was a challenge that you did not dare to tackle or the challenge that was so easy, it took you five minutes. So this, this kind of story, uh, we're interested in listening to that as well. So perhaps we can start with Anil. Yeah, it was it was the very first challenge you can see it like you know just uh, like uh, reading about the like you know, video file extraction. I, I just just was scared that you know maybe this is an advanced version kind of of a nine challenge. So uh, I I didn't even even touch it like but later on you know uh, fr uh, from the second or third like even when the challenges I thought that you know uh, there are different challenges which is coming in and and it is covering different aspects of of data analytics. So I started taking part in it. so. Uh, in the first, you can say that no, no, this this is not my, my cup of tea. But later on, you know, I found, found it very interesting. So this gives a different uh, view to each and every bit of of uh, of, of a uh, like you know a user. I hear and, you. And it it it, it move, you know it it opens uh, their perspective and, and their knowledge and their comfort zone also. Maybe yeah. maybe uh, you know you would not uh, uh, even even look for uh, like you know. As a user, as a, as a data analytics, you will not. Some of them would not even touch NLP and all. But here, uh, maybe you will, you would try to do, to do, do uh, those kind of challenges as well. I see. How about you, Nymist? Yeah, your microphone. Okay, yeah, yeah. Um, so um, I did not know the correct setting of the string of uh, to data and time node. When mm -hmm. I solved the challenge number two, uh, split file and saving to support us. Mm. So uh, I was ashamed of myself when I saw the official solution, but uh, I have never used that node incorrectly since then. So <laughs> ah. that was a very good chance to run it. <laughs> so it <laughs> was you. useful. <laughs> How about you, Emiliano? Yeah, for me it was the the eighth challenge, the 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 world scores. Uh, just because I didn't know how to play that game in that time, uh, and because in those days I didn't actually have time to first learn the, the the game and then doing the challenge. But later then I've done I've done it, and it was it is actually a pretty easy game though. And yeah, uh, maybe just uh, just because of that, you know, because I, I I needed to first learn to maybe understand the game and then uh, and do the challenge. Um, I would like to say that um, none of the challenges took me five minutes or or less. I'm I mostly spend uh, a lot of time in my workflow because I tend to be uh, over organized and and because i want my i want my workflows to be self document so you can at least understand at the first glance what i'm trying to do and agreeing again with uh, what what martin said uh, in a couple of questions questions ago uh so that so so that i can uh, i i don't need to be the, the the only person responsible for my workflows so I can share it with others, and the others can understand it uh, better. And um, yeah, that is the main, the, the the core of the of this development. Definitely not a bad thing to have an over documented workflow. Nobody has ever complained of those. <laughs> <laughs> How about you, Ravelo? Um, personally, I, I struggled to do the last challenge. 
because I already use the APIs in, in my I'm workflow, but in a different way. And there was these six or seven columns that were continuously repeating in a horizontal way. So they were named, uh, I don't know, name one, name two, name three, and so on. And I needed them in a vertical way. And after several, several <laughs> attempts, I I understood that there was something in the way I worked. So I said to myself, go back to the forum and find another solution because there must be a way to to read these columns in a in a vertical way. And I found uh, I think it was a workflow published by one of your colleagues and with your with the let's say the way to use it <laughs> so i i re, i it was another occasion opportunity to to learn something new i see how about you martin i think uh, i agree with Neil. for for me uh, it was by far the first challenge with uh, march the Simpsons character, they needed to organize. A few of them were misguided or misplaced in a different folder, and you needed to select those using uh, uh, widgets. That was definitely, uh, I only started uh, using Nime this fall, so it was still quite new when the challenges started. So there was a lot of gray areas on my canvas there. So trying to work with the binary file formats, uh, rendering of pictures, and the whole interactive component of widgets, it was a lot of different things that was just, each of them are difficult, but combined, it was kind of a, I almost didn't start the challenge, but I'm actually very happy that I did. Uh, so it was a tall order for you to get started, the community for, for that challenge there, but uh, I'm happy I did it. Yes, I think we, we, in hindsight, I think we could we could have taken it easy. We couldn't have started with an easier one. We, we, we packed a big punch, right, with the, the SVG <laughs> and the table viewer and all of that. You definitely sorted out the sheep from that challenge. <laughs> <laughs> it's a challenge. <laughs> I yoga could take part. Otherwise, you know, we, we wouldn't be even even reaching to this. <laughs> but I was happy to see that it was a, it was not an easy challenge. It was not rated as easy. No, it was not. <laughs> we did better that. We did better that. We did start with an easy, with a medium, with a. That should be hard. In hindsight. Yeah. Okay. Thanks, folks. So. We are starting to get to the end of this interview, getting close to the end. So I'm going to hand it back to Roberto for final considerations. Yeah, it would be nice to, it's been super interesting to listen to you. And I know it would be great to extend this interview for many more questions and many more uh, things to ask you, but we don't want to abuse your time. So I will ask maybe Rosaria if she um, can join us and there are any questions from the audience. And then otherwise we just uh, reach the end. Hi. So there are no questions from the audience live. I got some questions from some private channels. Like, for example, are you going to write a blog post about your uh, challenge experience? Is there going to be something that we can actually read? Well, I think it is. Uh, I, I, I think uh, Roberto, you have uh, you have sharing um, a couple of guidance in order to 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 write a blog in Medium. I think it is. Yes, correct. Yeah. Yes. Yeah. So I I was I I, I was thinking that is a uh, uh, this is a time to start doing it, and maybe yes, I would like to 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 spend a, a couple of hours a week to maybe transfer my experience with the with this challenge and. Uh, and to put it in some organized way, uh, explaining my solutions, my motivations, and, and yeah, yeah, I think that is a possibility. Yes, that's great. Perfect. Also, we have uh, we have a service, a help, I'm sorry, a writer helpline. Um, yeah. So you can book a, a slot with me uh -huh. or with our another colleague that is working in the same, let's say, part of uh, same area of Nime. So we can also help you, let's say, shape your content. So absolutely welcome. Thank you for <laughs> for mentioning this. Even I, I would love to because, you know, at least I can put in a business user's perspective here. Because, you know, here, like, there are a lot of uh, self-service analytics tools and, you know, business users uh, spend a lot of time to even, even uh, you know, when, when company hires a lot of uh, different analysts and, uh, you know, uh, different tools are being, being, being incorporated. 
we we spend a lot of time to even even illustrate the problem to them and <laughs> here you have you have tools that are very you you yourself get get uh, you know accustomed and then start using it yeah that's you great don't have, you don't have to at least you know spend to, so much time to even even uh, you know even uh, you know decipher your, your problems to others <laughs> you, you start using yourself you start learning yourself more. That's great, and I'd be happy to, you know, um, help you shape the content. And absolutely, yes, it's valuable yes, yes, yes. to share your experience with others. So that's obviously always welcome. Um, is there any other question, Rosaria? No, that, that that's it. There are a few more, but yeah, there are. Okay. <laughs> okay. okay. So I think with this, I would uh, like to conclude our interview. <laughs> Uh, thank you, thank you very much for being part of our, for being guest in our uh, in our Apple's episode of My Data Guest. It was a pleasure talking to you, and we are eager to see your solution for the upcoming challenges. And uh, so many thanks for joining. And uh, maybe Alina, you also want to say goodbye to our yes, guests. Yes, exactly. Thank you very much for participating. Thank you very much for going past the first one <laughs> and keep going. And, yes. you know, we are so glad and we are so happy that, that this is helpful for so many people and that you in particular, you know, the ninjas, right? You, yeah. you really committed to that and became like the, the poster children for the challenges. So thank <laughs> you so much. This, this means a lot to us, really. All right. Have a very nice rest of the day, oh. evening, night. Day. <laughs> There's many different <laughs> uh, time zones. So. Yeah. I'm just and... starting the day. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> bye bye, y'all. Thank you. Bye, everybody. Bye. Bye. Thank, Thank you. you. Thank you. Bye.